Look, there's not enough time in the day to accomplish everything on your to-do list, which is why you need to begin delegating simple administrative tasks to key teachers and administrators in your school district. Hi, my name is John Silwash. Welcome back to the Google Admin Bootcamp. The idea of giving a teacher or staff member access to the Google Admin Console might be enough to give you a nervous breakdown. But wait a minute, that's not what I'm talking about. I wanna show you how you can set up a custom role to give key trusted staff members a small piece of the Admin Console. They can help you reset passwords, approve Chrome apps and extensions, manage calendars, there's a lot of easy things you can do. Let's uh, take a closer look. We're going to dive into the admin console. The feature that we're looking at here today is uh, this one right down here at the bottom, the admin role. So you'll need to be a super user to have access uh, to that. Now, Google has already predefined a handful of very useful roles. And I'm going to start there. You don't even have to do anything for these. Just uh, assign them to a person. So any of these system roles that you see um, that, that have this whole system role uh, description on it. Those are preset by Google. Everyone should have those. In just a minute, we'll talk about these custom roles uh, that I've set up. I've got a couple of recommendations for uh, which ones you might want to use. Now, you are probably already a super admin. This is God powers, you know, genie powers. You get everything. And you definitely don't want to be handing out super admin access um, indiscriminately. You want to be very careful about that. Um, let's go down to a, a very helpful one. Um, this one right here, user management. Now, the user management is an easy one that allows a person to create a new user, delete a user, reset a password, rename, move a user, basically just work with the users. Now, even that might be a little bit much. You could, you know, potentially accidentally delete the superintendent's account or something. So if you want to delegate uh, admin access even further, you can um, sign up and make someone a help desk admin. The only thing that the help desk admin can do is reset passwords. That's it. They can't rename people, create users, delete users, just password resets. So if you have a, a media specialist, a librarian who can help you with those password reset requests, you could apply uh, that role to them. Now let's actually walk through the process of applying uh, this role to a user. A couple things we can do here. If you click on the actual title of the um, role, it'll open up this page. You can see more information about it, who has this role. And if you want to, you can actually come in here and see the specific um, privileges that are given to this role. Now, because this is a Google defined role, we can't make any changes to this. Um, you'd have to create a, a custom role if you want to make modifications. And we'll look at that in a second. Now, let's go ahead and assign this uh, to an individual. Now, uh, there's a cool thing that you can do with this. So I'm going to go to the admin. No one has this role currently. I'm going to go ahead and assign this to a user. We'll pick a user. But there's a really cool thing that if you're not paying attention, it's easy to miss. Let's say that Polly is the librarian at the middle school. And I want to give Polly the ability to reset passwords for the middle school staff, but I don't want her to accidentally reset a high schooler or staff member or other user account. Before you assign this role, you'll notice that there's an option for organizational unit. And I can actually click on that and further define Polly's access to say that she is only able to reset passwords for users in a special or specific organizational unit, in this case, the middle school. So I'll go ahead and assign that role. Um, she'll receive very, very limited access, even less than this. Really, she's just going to see the user uh, section and be able to go in and reset passwords for that individual. So that's an example of one of Google's defined roles. And Google has some very helpful ones, and it's a great place to get started with. Here's a list of um, you know, the, the roles that you'll see in the console if you've never um, set anything up. Obviously, super admin, we talked about user and help desk admin. The service admin is a pretty broad role that allows a user to pretty much go in and change settings for any of the applications, so like Gmail, Drive, Calendar, Sites, Google Vault 
any of those uh, services, a user would be able to go in and, and tinker with them and make changes for um, the entire district. So I'd be careful with that services admin. Another helpful one is the groups admin. So um, this allows a user to create Google groups, modify who's in a Google group, um, and manage them. You really don't even have to give them access to the admin console. They'll just go to the Google Groups service to do that. So these are the predefined system roles that you're going to find in the admin console. And that's a good list, but there is some things that are missing. So um, if you have Chromebooks in your district, what if you need someone to assist with approving apps and extensions? Maybe you have a whitelist and teachers are always like, I want this app, I want this extension, and you don't have time to do that. Well, there's not a predefined role for that, but you can create one. You can set one up. So let's head back to the admin console and uh, take a closer look at that. We're going to go back to the roles. We have all kinds of uh, different privileges in here. And I'm going to create a new role. And we can give it a name. We'll call this app approvals. Description is helpful if other people are in the admin console can very clearly define what exactly uh, is included with this role. And then we get this absolutely enormous tree of all the different permissions inside of the admin console. And I will admit it's a little overwhelming. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of different boxes uh, that you can select. You do need to have a pretty firm grasp of the admin console and the sections of it to understand um, what you're doing here. The good news is Google does have some pretty good documentation about everything that you see listed. If you ever have any questions, just click on this uh, little question mark right here, admin console privileges. This help article, it's long, but we'll specifically explain what is and is not included with every single checkbox that you see on this list. Now, there's a, a pretty easy one um, to set up the app approvals. So I'm going to zoom in so you can take a, a closer look. So there is, and I use the search box. I search for application settings, and then there's a section for Chrome management. I do not want someone managing all of the settings. I don't want them managing all of the user settings. I just want them to manage the application settings. So essentially, all that does is allow someone to go in and um, add or remove a Chrome app or Chrome extension from the district whitelist. So that's a very helpful custom role that you can set up if uh, you use Chromebooks. I've got a couple other ones that I think are worth uh, discussing. You know, I was just kind of tinkering, toying around here in the, uh, the admin console. And I came up with a few custom roles that I think might be uh, beneficial. And I'm going to put these up on the screen. You can always pause the video or take a screenshot of what you see here and then go into your admin console and uh, replicate this. This is the custom role for report access. So um, the admin console has some great reports, how much storage is being used, how many emails are being sent, documents being created. And one of your administrators might be interested in that data. They're applying for grants. They need to um, you know, uh, get documentation for your bond proposal and how much technology uh, funding you need. So you can give them access to the report section of the admin console without worrying that they're going to mess uh, with any of the other options. That's a very easy one. Google Calendar has uh, an admin role as well. So if your district is using the resource calendar where you can reserve laptop carts, conference rooms, projectors, 3D printers, you can delegate that access. This is a great thing to do to the um, librarian, media specialist, you know, whoever's in that space and is managing that space. They can um, change the reservations, um, add new reservations and new elements uh, to the resource calendar. We talked about the Chrome app approvals um, already, so manage application settings is another very helpful one. Um, if you want to broaden that a little bit, if you have Chromebooks, you can also do the Chrome device settings. So when it comes to managing Chromebooks, there's really three big areas. You have the device settings, the user settings, and the application settings. Um, you can create a role for each of those. Now, if you have someone who is very capable, you might assign all three of those custom roles, and they would basically be able to manage all of your Chromebooks, or you can piece it out and give uh, different people um, a tiny piece of that. So those are a few custom roles that you might want to consider uh, setting up uh, so that you can delegate access to other individuals.
Now, if you're interested in more tips and information on the admin console, I invite you to join me for an upcoming Google admin boot camp session. I have uh, virtual sessions that run throughout the year. And another key thing you need to know about the Google admin console is how to assign licenses to your users, especially if you've upgraded to one of the paid versions of Google Workspace for Education. Check out the video up at the top for more information on how to assign those licenses.